Don of Porthos. At the little farm of Master Dupont, just outside Freiburg, Therese Lesage has died. Having first returned to Joel's keeping the locket he had carried for her and explained to him its extraordinary value. Master Dupont and Joel, with Acreville the Musketeer, had stood as mourners beside the little grave in the Alt Brisac Cemetery, and now the two young soldiers are leaving the farm behind them and turning their steps towards Freiburg. Joel is silent and sad as they walk together, and the other, glancing at him sympathetically, guesses the reason for his preoccupation. Ah, it is sad to die with one as young and beautiful, Monsieur Joel. And yet I think she is a peace every though. Probably for the first time in her life. She will rest quietly here. She was once fate treated badly. But it's not for us to judge Therese Lafarge. She was not wholly good, but which of us is? And the path she trod was not altogether of her choosing. She saw and knew things which we do not understand. Oh, that she had lived a few minutes longer than I might know. Know what? It is over now. There is no use in wishing. Tell me, are we far from Freiburg? Mm, very close. Sometimes too close for my liking. How go things there? Slowly. Have we not enough men? <laughs> Ten thousand men could be posted around the walls of Freiburg and never take it. It was built to withstand the siege, and men of nature have combined to make it practically impregnable. Of what of equipment? Mm, we have fresh artillery, but no ammunition. It's coming, so they say. Ammunition? Of course. What is it, Mister? I just remember something. Look, what is going on over there? Hmm? Oh, some argument by the looks of it. And very little trench digging, which is what they're supposed to be doing hereabouts. There are the cavalry, and the others belong to the newly arrived corps of bombardiers. Let us see what it is all about. Good soldiers deserve their fighting for the enemy, not their companions. Oh, they're certainly foolhardy to be making so much noise in a part so open and so clearly visible to those on the walls of Freiburg. Their arguments will be stopped by gunfire if they're not careful. How now, friend? Friend, what is this all about? It is the marshal. He is making fools of us all. Improving on nature's handiwork. What's he done? It's all very fine for you, Saint Germain Musketeers. Nobody orders you around, humiliating you like this. A soldier should not question orders, Monsieur. An order should be reasonable. We are cavalrymen, Chevalier. Yes, we are used as foot soldiers. And not content with that, the marshal now orders us to take pig and spade like any sapper and dig trenches. Gentlemen who wear my uniform, 
and those who measure more than a span from crown to sole. <laughs> you rascal! You overgrown traitor! Let me let him sway and trample you into the stone. I've got more respect for good French soil. Oh, gently, gently, little bombardier. Little, with one hand behind easy, my back. Easy now, easy. Don't rush at me like that. You might stumble into the funnel tops of your <laughs> boots. <laughs> And then we'd never be able to find you again. Stop it, I say. Bonero. Sergeant Bonero. Take hold of this little bit of exaggerated importance. This, this apology for a light horseman. This one who is laughing so much. Take him to the provost marshal to be dealt with. Mind what you are doing, monsieur. Do not lay hands on me unless you wish to take my seal. Stand back there. Be careful, Captain. I warn you that my men are in no mood for trifling. Recall your sergeant. Never arrest him. I will not be bullied by a mannequin. Mannequin, mannequin, years. I'll teach you to call me names. Teach these insolent dogs the messing boys. They have swords, but we have our picks and shovels. At the leg. I hold you responsible for any bloodshed, Captain. I hold you responsible for their disobedience of orders. I hang drawn and quarter them for their abuse. At them, lad, let's flog the foul mouth. Let's go, friend Joel, before we become involved. What a hothead to stick with shovels and swords. It's time we were moving. That time a cool head in the bean bakery, I know the fiery little dwarf, but I warrant I can deal with him. As you will, then, but take care. The flying pickaxe would make a dint even in your skull. Stand back, sir! Stand back! In the name of thrust, I do command you! Oh, heaven love me, it is the giant himself. My friend, Joel. Death of my life. What dungeon have you sprung from? Put up your swords, comrades. My good bombardiers, put down your weapons. You are both in the wrong. Never. Friquet is never wrong. Friquet speaks without thinking. You were wrong this time, my friend. Thus, bullying, imperious, and aggressive manners never brought obedience. Control your temper, man. By my sword, it's not the fault of his majesty's light horse that they are head and shoulders above you. I can do as well as any man, despite my size. Nobody doubts it, good Friquet. Pass by this stupid superiority and content yourself with the knowledge that good things are wrapped up in small parcels. <laughs> That's true enough. At any rate... The ladies give preference to a small and dapper gallant, I can tell you. For your sake, Joel, I will put up my sword. And as for you, Captain, it would have been handsomer to carry out the king's orders without question. You are no less his majesty's man because you have a horse between your legs. But we are cavalrymen, not staffers. We are all here for one purpose. To take Freiburg. To do that, a blow with a pick is as good as a cut with a sword. But, monsieur, I tell you, we are... They are firing oh, the 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 Even cavalrymen will now see the necessity for this work. Monsieur, I... Ah! Let him but all. Think of killed him. Not everybody uses his last breath to admit an error. My friend, had the front of this trench been opened as it should have been, this brave man, your captain, would still be alive. Riquet, give me a shovel. I will help dig your trench. That's as good as ten men. Here you are. Have you a pick for me, too? And me, I'll help. Yes, Accomplished. 
your trenches are dug. Yes, the trenches are dug. To which job I must thank you, my valiant Joel. I never thought to get it done before nightfall. But now, Joel, look at it, look at it. All those beautiful trenches, mortars set up, all, everything complete. It does look good. It does my heart good to see them. <laughs> and it does my heart good to see you. Oh, it's fabulous, stupefying, magnificent, my faithful Joel. Here we are. We meet beneath the very cannons of the enemy. And we, we had thought you moldering away in some gloomy cell. I shall tell you all about it. Although we must have some time to spare, for it is a long story. Come then. Now that's finished here, let's go back to camp. We'll find our good friend, Polaron. And you shall tell us all of the flag in the valley. Uh, wait. I have just remembered. Uh, I shall tell you sometime, but not now, for I have work to do. Work? What are you going to do? Take Freiburg single-handed? <laughs> Perhaps, but not tonight. Tonight, I must see Marshal Crecky. Tonight? Is it important to see him tonight? If I do not see him tonight, Friquet, 30 good men will lose their lives. And we, in all probability, will lose Freiburg. In that case, Joel... There is sorrow ahead. Marshal Crecky is not here. <laughs>